This tutorial shows how to use customized parameters to configure your BIM model and extract relevant takeoff quantities even if the underlying model data is not structured how you need it. We'll use custom parameters to assign new component categories by type, location, and self-calculated takeoff quantities. We'll now switch to an open Visicon project. The model we're going to estimate is this IFC model of a partial structural model. In particular, we're interested in taking off the quantities of the beams in these roof trusses. If we go ahead and open up the object properties and we click one of these members, let's explore what properties came with the IFC model. So we can see here that each one of them, you know, they're categorized just as beams, so nothing, nothing very distinguishing. We see that the name, each one of them has an instance name. So for example, this is an SHS 150 times 6 number two, this one is number three. So that's not gonna help us really categorize the beams by their type. The file didn't have any comments or mark data or any additional description. If we scroll down, we see, okay, we have a length parameter, so maybe we can use that. We go to the parameters and we see that this particular IFC export didn't include any other relevant information. Again, the name is repeated here, but that doesn't really help us much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create custom parameters to be able to extract more relevant information from this model for our takeoff purposes. The first thing we want to do is create a custom parameter to be able to define categories for the various beam types that we have. We're going to go and open up the project browser and because these beams are already colored red, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the component color mode so this way we can see when we're actually selecting a particular beam. We're going to go to our filters. We're going to start with our first filter and we're going to just going to create a general one called beams and we're gonna use the categories to select all general framing. We see we have 303 beams. So here, these are the beams that we've selected. So that's great. So now we're gonna take this, we're gonna right click, we're gonna clone, and here we're going to start creating our first expression-based filter to categorize the SHS 150 by six beams. So we're gonna say here these are SHS 150 by six beams. The way we're going to do it is we're going to grab one of these beams. We're going to go to the properties. We see that it has the name and we can reason about the actual text that's in the name. So we're going to select that variable, come in here in our expression, right click, paste and say name. We're going to use the wildcard. So that's going to be tilde equal open our quotation marks star 150 star close the quotation mark. So now you see it has identified 201 beams that are include 150 in the name designation. This filter is going to then be used to define the category of these SHS 150 beams. I've gone ahead and created other categories. So we're just going to go and I had saved them to a template. So we're going to apply the SHS beam categories template and all that does is just populate the rest. So we have those that have name 150, which we created, 200, 250, 300. And so you can see now I've selected each of these individual beam categories. Next, we're gonna select all of our beams. We're gonna go to the parameters. And the first thing we wanna do is with all beams selected is we wanna create a new parameter called member category. So I'm gonna right click in the parameters box, hit insert. It's gonna be a new category. We're gonna call this new parameter category, takeoff properties and this is going to be beam member category. It's not gonna have any units, it's gonna be text, and it's not gonna be driven by an expression. So we just simply say, okay. Now we can take all of these beams, and so now we can take all of those that we've selected here, and we can now type in here SHS 150 times six, for example. So let's go check, right? We select this beam here. This one does not have a category. This one right here, is now properly categorized as an SHS 150 times six without the instance information. So we're gonna select this next batch and we're gonna say these are SHS 200 by eight. Take the next category, SHS 250 by eight. And then the last one, SHS 300 by eight. So now every beam that we select now has its own category and we can now use this to group in our quantity takeoff. Next property we wanna do is we want to use the length to be able to calculate the weight of each member. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and to do this, we're gonna say length times, we have a table that has all of the member unit weights per length. So we're gonna to come to the parameters again, right click. And actually before we do that, we're gonna make sure we select all the beams so that this new parameter is assigned to all of those right click, insert. We're going to add this new parameter to the existing group that we already created, takeoff properties. It's going to be in the same group. It's going to be called weight. 
per meter. This time what's important is because we're going to do some calculations on this, we do need to make sure that we enter this as the correct unit. So this time we're going to make sure it's a double, so that's a floating point. We don't specify a value and we say OK. So now at this point, what we can do is we can select all of these beams. So we have, looking at our table, we say the SHS 150 times 6 has a unit weight per meter of 26.4. I take all those that are 200 by 8, I look at my table, those are 46.5. The 250s are 59.1. The 300s are 71.6. Now we have a category, a weight per meter. So next what we want to do is we want to actually calculate the weight of each member. So again, we're going to select all of our beams and we're going to now pick our length property. So we're going to copy that variable. I have this Word document open. We're going to paste it here. So it's going to be length times, and then we're going to go back to this new parameter that we created, weight per meter. Right? Remember, this is kilograms. So I right-click, copy that variable as well. So now I'm going to have length times takeoff properties weight per meter. Copy that whole formula. And with all beams selected, I now go back in here, right-click, insert. We're going to add this to this parameter group called takeoff properties. The group name stays as is. We're going to give it a new name and it's going to be called member weight. The unit category this time is going to be mass and it's going to be in kilograms and we're going to paste the expression that we wrote. So it's going to be length times takeoff properties weight per meter and we're going to use the expression. We're going to run this and if I now select any of these members we can see it has calculated its own weight based on one of the parameters, geometry parameters that was imported from the IFC model as well as the weight per meter that we entered. So the last thing we're going to do with our custom parameters is we want to now add an additional categorization to our trusses so that we can group them by location. Specifically if I go in and turn off all of my objects and only turn on the beams, what we want to do is we want to have a categorization where we want to take off only the beams that are in these arched trusses versus those that are in the flat ones. So first of what we're going to do is we're going to go back into beams, right click, insert a new parameter. Again, we're going to add it to the same category that we have. Group category stays the same. This time we're going to call this truss type. It's going to, again, just be text. You don't need to put an expression. So now we have this truss type. So now I can select all of those trusses there. Let's go make sure we've got them all selected and we don't. So I'm going to go, go back to the top and we'll reselect all of those. I'm going to go to my ortho. That's easier. Top. Now we've selected all of them. With those selected, those are going to be of truss type arched. Similarly, we're going to go and grab the other ones. Actually, we're going to go to the top view. We'll grab all of these and make sure we only selected the correct ones and those are going to be categorized as flat. So now each one of our beam elements has now a specific category, has a weight per meter, has a total self-calculated member weight and is categorized based on where it is in the structure or what type of a truss it's part of. So with that data given, we can now go to our reports. We're going to do a inventory report. So this is going to be a beams by member type. We're going to say what do we want to run the quantities off of. We're going to go off of a filter. We're going to select the beams. So we're going to run the quantities off of all beams. How do we want to group them? We don't really care about level. We don't really care about category or type because what we have is our own category. So you see here where I go beam member category, right click, copy variable, and this is where we're going to group it by beam category. What are the additional values that I want to show? I want to show the name. So that's going to be the instance name. I want to show its weight per meter so that this we can validate. And for each beam, I also want to copy and have it present its own weight, right? So we have name, weight per meter, so that we know what, we, what we're basing it on, and then member weight. And I can just simply run this report. What you see, we've now created an Excel spreadsheet. And for each of these, I can now see it's 
grouped them. So under the 200 by eights, I have 45 of them. For each of these, shows me exactly what the name is. So that's the instance name, the weight per meter. So this was 46.5 kilograms. This was the member weight itself. So this is what was calculated and the count. And then these are additional cost drivers. What I want you to notice under this kilogram. So here we have 194.445. What you can also do is come in here and let's say under the calculated weight, you can round up by putting an at and a point Oh, one, the precision. So here we're going to rerun this report. And if we open up this, we can now see that the actual weight is now rounded up to two decimal points. So this is how you can kind of control how the data is presented in your takeoff. Next, we'll take this report, clone it. And this time, so this was beams by member type. Now this is going to be beams by truss type and then member type, right? So this is where we just want to know how many beams are in each type of truss. And then for each of those subcategories, break it down. We have already the grouping by beam member category, but we're also going to come in and we're, I'm going to grab one of these beams. We're going to take this truss type. So I'm going to right click, copy that variable. We're going to add this as a category. We're going to select the truss type and we're going to move it up. So first we're going to group by trust type, then by member category. And we're going to run that same exact report. Now we can see our quantity takeoff has now been customized even further, where we know all of the beams that are part of the arched. And then for each one, so for example, here of the sum 200, et cetera, SHS 150s, 105 of them, are actually part of the arched. So if I need to schedule which ones I need to deliver for that stage of construction, this is how I can get to the data. So in conclusion, you can use Visicon's custom properties to be able to augment the data that's in your model and use the expressions to have the members auto calculate certain parameters. And with this, it gives you a lot of flexibility to be able to add additional characteristics and logic that you can then use to develop very customized quantity takeoffs. Thank you for watching our video. Contact sales at visicon.com or sales at adaptsoft.com to request your free intro version.